Okay, here's another cool equilibrium problem. And we've given the value of Kp for this reaction. So this is uh, carbon uh, plus carbon dioxide making two carbon monoxides. This is, the, um, this is a neat reaction to make carbon monoxide gas, it turns out. Kp is 1.52, so that tells us that at equilibrium, there'll be about equal amounts of these things and these things. And in this problem, we're told the total pressure and we're asked to find the partial pressures of CO2 and CO. So how are we going to do a problem like this? Um, well, we probably need to start off by writing down the expression for Kp. And Kp, just like Kc, it's products over reactants, except instead of using concentrations, we use the partial pressures. And the right-hand side, we've got carbon monoxide, and we're going to square it because there's two of them. And the left-hand side, we've got carbon and we also have carbon dioxide. And the thing to remember here is that anytime you've got a solid or a liquid or the solvent, then you're going to set its effective concentration or effective pressure to 1. And so that tells us that Kp is just equal to the partial pressure of carbon monoxide squared over the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And we're told in the problem that this is 1.52. We're also told in the problem that the total pressure is 4.5 atmospheres. So we can go ahead and we can write the total pressure is 4.5 atmospheres. And we need to find out the partial pressure of CO and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now you might be tempted to set up an ice chart here. And actually that was my first inclination too, but it turns out that we don't have to, and the reason is we just need to solve a couple of equations. So for instance, we know Kp is 1.52, and that involves two unknowns, the partial of CO and the partial of CO2. And if we could just get another an equation, and we could go ahead and put these two equations together and solve, and of course we actually have another equation, the total pressure. Remember Dalton's law of partial pressures from chapter 5? It says that the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures. And so what that means in this problem is we really have these two boxed equations here and two equations in two unknowns, piece of cake to solve for. So what's the best way to solve for this? Well, there's lots of ways we can do it, but what we can do is we can take um, one of these equations. So for instance, we can take um, this top equation and we can rearrange for the partial pressure of CO2. So let's go ahead and try that. So we've got, um, let's see, the partial of CO squared is equal to 1.52 times by the partial of CO2. So I've just basically multiplied both sides by the denominator. And then I could go ahead and solve for the partial CO2. That's just the partial of carbon monoxide squared over 1.52. And what good is this? Well, I can take this expression up here, and I can substitute in for the partial pressure of CO2 now. So let's go ahead and do that. So then we can write 4.5. I'll leave off the units just to make it easier. That's equal to the partial of CO plus the partial of CO2, and the partial of CO2 we've got from above, right? So we've got this here that we can just substitute directly in its place. So that's PCO squared over 1.52. All right, so things are looking pretty good now. Now we've got a single equation in a single unknown. And so that means that we can solve this kind of equation. Let's go ahead and bring everything to one side. So let's write it in terms of... Uh, PCO, so that's squared divided by 1.52, let me just kind of do it like that, um, plus the partial of CO, and I want to get that 4.5 to the other side, so that's minus 4.50, and that's equal into zero. So what did we do that for? Um, well, this now looks like an AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero equation where x is our partial pressure we're trying to solve for and 
a is, well, in this case, plus 1 over 1.52. In this case, it's just 1. And for c, that's equal to minus 4.5. So we can solve this using the quadratic equation. So x equals minus b plus or minus, and so on, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And remember, x is the partial of CO. So we can go ahead and we can solve this. We can just plug those values in. So we are going to get x equals minus b, so that's minus 1, plus or minus root b squared, so that's 1 squared, minus 4 times by a, a is 1 over 1.52, times by c, c is minus four and a half, and we're square rooting all of that and dividing it by two times by a, a is that one over 1.52, and so that's gonna give us a rather meaty expression for x, right? And so we can go ahead and write this as minus one plus or minus 3.583, all divided by 1.316, and that gives us two values, 1.963, or the other value is minus 3.483. So one of these we can throw out, and the one we can throw out is this one, because X is the partial pressure of carbon monoxide. So I guess that means we should probably write units. Okay, And we know that a negative pressure is impossible, so it has to be a positive pressure. And so then we can just go ahead and write then that the partial pressure of CO is 1.963 atmospheres. And what about the partial pressure of CO2? Well, we just need to pick one of the equations from above and substitute in. Uh, we were told the partial of CO2 is the partial of CO all squared over 1.52. And so now we can go ahead and substitute that in. So that's 1.963 squared over 1.52. And that gives us the partial pressure of CO2, 2.54. What are the units? Atmospheres. So how do we know if we did it right? Well, one thing we can do is we can check and substitute back in. We know the total pressure in this problem was four and a half atmospheres. We know that the total pressure is the sum of the two partial pressures. And we know that the partial of carbon monoxide was 1.96. And the partial of CO2 was 2.54. And surprisingly enough, we didn't get any Randolph error here. Or at least we ran it up and down probably equally and we get 4.5 atmospheres, and so that means that probably, I mean, we might not have gotten this right, but there's probably a good sign when we substitute back in and it solves.